to Wednesday Night Bible Study. We are very, very glad that you are joining us this snowy, well it's snowy right now, I guess it might not be snowy by the time <laughs> you see this. Uh, I hope you enjoyed your snow, either way. Uh, I'm Sarah Jane Nixon, I'm the pastor here at New Dublin Presbyterian Church. My name is Don Hanshu, I'm one of the pastors at Dublin United Methodist Church. And we're glad that you are joining us to think about the Bible a little bit. If you have a phone like uh, I do, or a physical Bible like Don does, uh, we're going to be reading from Jeremiah 29, verses eh, 7 to 12 ish. So, <laughs> so um, feel free to, you know, pause the video if you want to, find that, read it if you want to, um, and then and then replay. Will you pray for us? I'll be glad to. Let's pray. God, we thank you for how we can take and hit the pause button in our life now and just create space to look at Scripture and allow it to come alive in our heart and to speak to us in such a timeless way. We thank you, Lord, for how this Scripture is something that we're working with tonight and can help each of us, even as communicators tonight, understand your presence in a more powerful way when things are difficult. We give you praise, God. God, us now we ask. Amen. Amen. So this is one of the books of the Bible that's really uh, grounded in history, mm. the history of God's people. Uh, they've got some real uh, difficult, really specific things that are happening to them that we can't necessarily just, um, you know, pick up and transfer neatly into our own lives. Can you talk us through a little bit? Oh, of goodness. Um, it's a fascinating, painful story. Uh, Jeremiah is a prophet, um, which means more like a outspoken preacher. It, it, it is in that era, in that time. And what was happening is there was a lot of geopolitical kind of pushing around. And um, God had given favor to the Hebrew people for a long time. And then their disobedience and their their lack of uh, of, of truly being kind to the poor and the marginalized, God removes God's favor and allows natural things to occur. And as those natural things happen, there is a power by the name of, of Babylon. And it's, if you want to think of it being kind of east of where Jerusalem would have been, uh, it would have been, uh, when I say a, a, like it would have been a, the world power at that time. And they came in and they their tactic was to come into a city, come into a place that they wanted to conquer, and extract all of the intelligent people, people at any kind of school, any of the powerful people, wealthy people, and to take them and leave just a very, very few people there, and then repopulate with people thousands of miles away. Now, that meant you had to walk. They didn't put you in nice little camel buses to get back where they were. And, <laughs> and it's just it's so painful and dreadful for us to think about now. I mean, they... um. Uh, you know, if you ever see like an Egyptian hieroglyphics or, uh, or if you see any of those kind of pictorial kind of pictures of, of things that were happening, you know it was the Babylonians uh, in those pictures if there are hooks that are in the, the flesh, the arms, the face of the people that they're making come along. Um, that's the Babylonians that did that. That was just some of the, the terrible tactics they did to make you travel that far. So uh, they just... Uh, Terribly mean, uh, oppressive people, very, very efficient in the war machine. And now the Hebrew people have exiled and moving to Babylon, and, and this is your enemy. And yet, Jeremiah has these profound words mm -hmm. about his enemy. Yeah, so, so you know, if you're uh, one of these people who's been forcibly... Uh, sent somewhere else and the prophet of God comes you're going to expect him to say something like resist to the last person and um, God is going to save you you know but this is not what Jeremiah says Jeremiah um, says you're here you're going to be here for a while the text says 70 years the number seven um, for uh, these it's more it's more like uh, until it's over it's a complete kind of a thing uh, so you're here, you're going to be here for a while. So settle down, uh, have children, pray for the welfare of the place where you are. 
uh, and when the time is over, the Lord will bring you back to Jerusalem. Um, and then, of course, we have this famous line. You see it everywhere. It's on people's coffee cups and t-shirts and whatever. Surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare and not for your harm. To give you a future and a hope. So that's the context. If you ever wondered, if you've seen this on your coffee mug and wondered, uh, this is the context for that verse. Um, yeah, we like to say it at graduation for high school students yeah. and... You know, but, wow, I mean, and that's, it's appropriate to use, use there, but man, it has such a more rich, deeper meaning to in the face of your oppressor. Mm -hmm. to, so we're trying to culturally wipe you off the face. That's the point of all this mixing of people. Right. I mean, it's, it's a total, it's like not quite genocide where you kill people, but you, mm -hmm. you kill the culture so that people will never come back to that culture. It's fascinating, really. It is. I mean, it's devious, but it, it, yeah. it's smart. Um... And we don't, I mean, we're not threatened with anything like that scale of tragedy or trauma. And I don't want to uh, make it, you know, lessen it or mitigate it, what happened to them. But, you know, we do, ow, bit my tongue. <laughs> we, do, <laughs> we do go through periods in our spiritual life um, where... You might feel like you're in exile. You might feel like the Lord has abandoned you. Um, actually, I think we all do. I've talked to several people who are experiencing that. I've experienced it. Um, I assume. Yeah, oh, yes. We all have. Absolutely. Yeah. We all go through these periods where um, it feels like you can't pray. It feels like um, there's no point in going to worship because God isn't there and God isn't hearing you and your, your prayers are bouncing off the ceiling. And I don't know, maybe you're in that time right now. Of course, we all also go through times where, you know, we call them mountaintop experiences, where it's very easy to pray and it's obvious that God is with you. And, and a lot of times we go through cycles of this in our Christian life. And sometimes they're long cycles and sometimes they're shorter cycles, depending on the season. Um, so if you're going through that right now, what I want to tell you is, first of all, you're not alone we do go through these cycles and two that God has you in that season for a reason. And it isn't because he hates you. Um, God is doing something through that season. So if you can, um, to take the advice of Jeremiah and be willing to live there until the time is up and until, um, God moves again. One I think is also really important about this. It's, it really challenges us when we want to hold resentments, you know, especially in our more modern world, a very different situation, mm -hmm. but not to hold resentments. And you can see, begin to see the glimmer of Christ communicated in this passage that, that we should actually care for our enemies. And in that, in doing that, it's not so much transforming them as it does transform us. It's, it's an equal thing. And so it's just it's a very powerful, profound passage that's easily thrown out on a coffee mug, mm -hmm. but has so much more meaning. Absolutely. So even if you're not facing graduation or a big change in your life, even if it's just the day in, day out sort of dreariness, just God has a, a, a plan for you and a future for you. And it isn't, um, it isn't despair and it isn't destruction future and a hope. Indeed. Well, and hope, let's have a word of prayer. God, we thank you for this time for us to spend together as we remember that you do walk with us. You have a plan, a hope, a desire for us. Help us walk in that direction with you. Help us not hold on to resentments. Um, instead, pray for the prosperity even of our enemies. And we give you thanks for the Spirit of Christ that allows us to do that. In the name of your Son, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, next week is Ash Wednesday. That's February 17th. And at 7 o'clock, there will be a Ash Wednesday service where uh, we at Dublin United Methodist Church, Don Sheeler and myself, and Sarah Jane Nixon will be doing a combined worship service on that night at 7 o'clock. We encourage you to participate. Um, and if you, we're going to encourage you to find a, a, a black magic marker or just a pen, and you'll be able to participate in what we're going to modify as an imposition of the ashes during that time. So look forward to having you Wednesday, February 17th at 7 p.m. Hope to see you then. Take care.